Four and a half years ago, Leicester City pulled off one of the greatest underdog stories of all time, going from relegation candidate to the start of the season to Premier League winners come the end of it. Flash forward to 2020 and after just missing out on the top four last season, there's plenty of reasons to be optimistic at the King Power, with a top manager in Brendan Rodgers and some excellent young talent coupled with some great experience too, today we see if we can put Leicester back amongst the best and win the Champions League with the Foxes in just five years. So with Leicester being a four and a half star team, in my opinion, and the boards as well, the first season is all about finishing in the top four and qualifying with the Champions League. Failed to do it that way, we've got to win the Europa League. When you look at the team, Kasper Schmeichel and Jamie Vardy, despite being the oldest two in the first 11, are still on top of their game right now. So I'm not going to replace them straight away, but I think we do need to replace them for Ben Chilwell, who left to Chelsea at left back, and also a new class centre half to replace Johnny Evans for the long term as well. Those are my two positions to strengthen. And there's around 55 million in the transfer budget as well, so plenty of cash to splash. And as for the transfer list, I've got seven players on there, including a club legend in Wurz Morgan, Jakubovic, Christian Fuchs, Schlemani, Markle Brighton, Matty James, Nam Palace Mendy, and Sam Hughes as well. Quite a few players to sell in season one. And after the first sale goes through, Schlemani on his way to St. James's Park for 7.7 .7 mil. I'm going to bring our first signing of the season. And the area for me of focus is the left back area. Now that Ben Chilwell's gone to Chelsea, I then got faith in James Justin, really talented fullback from Luton Town but I want a class left back in season one. Alfonso Davis of Bayern Munich or Kieran Tierney of Arsenal. Let's see how much Bayern want for the Canadian. Ow. Well, there's my answer. A bit too much. 84.6 mil. Yeah, that's, that's not coming off. Shame too because he'd be absolutely perfect for us. So that leaves us with plan B, Kieran Tierney, that's not a bad second choice either. 35 mil is the fee we arrange and he is in on a five year deal. Might not be quite as good as Andy Robertson, but still a really talented young Scotsman. 23 years old, plenty of room to grow and 78 rated means he'll slide right into our first 11 as well. Left back in, Tierney arrives. Back to the sales, and there is a very interesting one here for club captain and club legend Wes Morgan. Galatasaray for half a mil, and as sad as it is to let him go, it's best to say farewell to the skipper. A legend of the club, and now he's gone to Turkey to Galatasaray. And a bid here for Nampalis Mendy as well. He's off to Sassuolo for four and a half mil. And the bid's are flying in now. Johnny Evans wanted by the Saints for a swap deal. I did say I wanted to replace him. I'm a big fan of his, but it's time to look for younger targets. Johnny Evans off to the Saints for 12.5 mil. And the bids are flying in now. Huddersfield Town won Matty James, and I'm totally fine with that as well. Just getting his salary off the books is the most important thing. And as Evans and Mendy have gone, there is an interesting bid here for Mark O'Brien from RB Leipzig for 7.5 mil. And after last night, I think they'll probably want to try him at centre half. And after those four sales have now gone through, James, Evans, Mendy, and Wes Moore, we've got around £50 million in our transfer budget. And I want to bring in that replacement for the Northern Irish defender. And speaking of RB Leipzig, two of their centre-halves on the shortlist. Deo Upamecano and Ibrahima Konate, the French duo, and Tapsoba of Bayer Leverkusen as well. All three class centre-halves, all 21 years old, but I want Upamecano. I want to bring him here. 44 million is the fee we arrange and a really cheap weekly wage as well of just 37 and a half thousand pounds on a five-year deal and I believe this guy is the highest potential center off in FIFA 21 at 90 or possibly 91 overall so Deo Upamecano in potential to be special and our backline looks a lot stronger and younger now with Tierney and Deo adding to it. And as Mark Brighton goes the other way for 7.5 mil, that fee plus the season ticket money means we've got around 24 and a half, possibly 24 and three quarter million in the budget. And I'm going to go after a new backup striker as an impact sub for Jamie Vardy. Two names on the shortlist, sadly can't get Pats and Daku, who's moved on to Brighton in this summer window. But the alternative is a guy that I'm an absolutely massive fan of, both in the game and in real life as well. Myron Boadu of AZ Alkmaar, 19 years old, let's bring him here. A valuation bid of 12 million is all it takes to sign him and this kid is the real deal. Still a teenager but with an amazing goal to game ratio in the Netherlands of one in every two. And he's been capped by his country already and scored at international level as well. Buadu is in a really exciting prospect. 
And we've got just about enough money for a new signing. We're going to get a backup right back for Ricardo Pereira. And Max Aarons and Norwich will be absolutely perfect. And I'm going to give them Daniel Amati as well. There are three right backs here already. So you don't need another one. But Amati is only 73 rated. So the same overall as Max Aarons. But he is five years older. And thus has a lot less potential as well. Three million plus a minor sell on clause is the fee we agree. As Amati goes to Carrow Road and Aarons comes here. And on a five year deal, he might be good enough to take out Ricardo Pereira right now but he certainly can be in the future as well. Relegated last season, but back in the Premier League, Max Aaron's in as our new backup right back for the Portuguese right back. And because Amati made that transfer fee incredibly cheap, that does mean we still have a bit of money left over. And I've just signed a new left back here as a backup for Kieran Tierney as well. We know Christian Fuchs is going to be going come the end of the season. And after agreeing an 11.1 million pound deal with Manchester United, Brandon Williams is going to come in on a five year deal, 27 and a half grand a week. 75 rated, only three ratings behind Kieran Tierney. Good competition for the Scott and one to watch for the future as well. Brandon Williams is in. And that's it. Very busy summer transfer window finally concluded, but what an efficient window it was. We sold so much Deadwood in the first season. All Brighton, Matty James, Nan Palace Mendy leaving the club, Johnny Evans going to Southampton, Wes Morgan, the captain leaving, and Shlomani leaving first, of course. So loads of aging players leaving. And the five signings we made, all in our early 20s, or in Boadu and Williams' cases, 19 years old. And when you look at our team now, it's gotten younger and better. We improved the left back and the centre back roles, which is my main concern in season one. Kieran Tierney coming in. I would have preferred Alfonso Davis, but the Scott is still a decent player at 78 rated. Upa Makani, one of the highest potential players in the game, signing for us too. I'm really liking our team that's going forward and for season one as well. We've got to finish in the top four. That's going to be very difficult to do in our first season of Premier League. Let's simulate through to January and see how we're getting on in the Europa League and in the Premier League as well. So, just about to enter January, certainly made it for our Europa League group, but as for the Premier League, let's see how we're getting on. Wait for it. There we are, fourth place, two points clear of the champions, Liverpool in fifth, and also seven clear of Wolves in sixth. We've only one point behind the top three, all separated by just goal difference. So doing enough in the league, though, it is very tight. Ipswich Town in the FA Cup third round away at Portman Road in the Europa League as well. I told you what for our group. I knew that as I was simulating. We've got Real Sociedad in the last 32 after winning all of our games in the group stage. So bring on the Spaniards in the first knockout round. As for the development of our players half through the season, Brandon Williams is growing by one, Tierney's growing by two, though, 11 clean sheets in 20, and obviously the Upa Meccano's growing by two as well, being pretty solid at the back, now 81 overall, and Aarons and Bawadu have both, uh, both grown by a rating each and not played too much, but the star of the team so far is James Madison, he's grown by three ratings and has eight goals and seven assists in 21 games. And at the start of the season, four of our players in the starting 11 were under 80 overall, but now due to the progression of the team everyone is 80 rated or higher and in my opinion this team is more than good enough to stay in the top four and as for winning the Europa League I'm not entirely sure but I won't mind too much as long as you do qualify for the Champions League via the league either way that's all I want for season two I'm not bored about the FA Cup we can go out to which town I'm not one bit fussed I just want to make sure we reach Champions League let's simulate to the end of the season and see if we've done it come on Leicester City well, the Europa League was very disappointing. More on that in a moment but as the season comes to its close here. Oh, yes, I don't really mind one bit because we have done it. Top four confirmed. We stay in fourth. Six points clear of Man City and eight points behind the winners, Liverpool. But I'm totally fine with fourth place. Champions League foot in the King Power next season. I felt very confident heading into the season. This is a really good Leicester team. No reason we couldn't stay in the top four. As the FA Cup, Spurs won that in an all-North London affair. I don't know when we were knocked out, though. We didn't reach the round of 16 like the board wanted us to reach. And we were knocked out in, what, the fourth round? Did we get through to Town? Yes, we did, but we were knocked out by Walsall at the King Power. Fair play to the lower league side. As for the Europa League, I saw us get knocked out in this stage by the eventual finalists, Bridgman and Gladbach, in the quarterfinals. Manchester City were the winners in the end, but I don't really mind one bit. We didn't win it because the board might have wanted it, but all I wanted was Champions League football. We've got that by finishing in the top four, so I'm totally fine with the failure in the cup and in Europe as well. And to be fair, in the cup as well, I didn't really care about it. It was quite embarrassing. Either way, top four is good enough for me, and that's a good season one. As for the progression of our new signings, Kieran Tierney this year grew by four ratings to 82 overall. What a sign-in. 
Upa Meccano, also agreed by four, but that's not a real surprise considering how high his potential is anyway. This guy's an absolute tank. Max Aaron's grew by two, and Buadu only grew by one, which was slightly disappointing. Regards, the team as a whole grew really nicely indeed. Shenji Zunda is now 82 overall, Madison up to 85, and Didi is 88 rated as well. And this team back amongst the best in the Champions League. I felt confident, though we certainly will need to make some new signings in the summer if we're going to compete in the Champions League and possibly for the Premier League title as well. Regardless, very successful season one, really encouraging indeed. Bring on season two, we're back in the Champions League. Season two, Champions League, lots of work to be done in this transfer window though. Big signings to come, especially because the board objectives are incredibly tough. Reached a semi-final of the Champions League in our first year back in it and in the FA Cup as well and win the Premier League, which to be fair, I was kind of expecting after last season. 122 mil in the budget though, plenty of money to work with heading into this season. And to be fair, when you combine a team we've got with the money to work with as well, there's no reason we can't hit those three objectives, though they are very tough indeed. I would say heading to season two as well, we need a new star centre-half. Uber Meccano's great, but we could still do with someone to play alongside him. I want a world-class elite centre-back. And five names on the shortlist as well, including Danny Ward, our backup goalkeeper, and Kalechi Aichianacho, who sadly just hasn't really developed. And this might be our last season with Kasper Schmeichel and Jamie Vardy in the first team as well. Both 34 years old now. I'm getting on a bit. And as for that big new centre-half I want to, he can't get much bigger than this guy. Nicholas Saul, 6 foot 5, 93 strength with his contract coming at the end of the year as well. So can get him for valuation too. Let's bring him in. And that is the exact fee we arrange with Bayern as well. 60.5 mil, that is the valuation. So we still have over half the budget remaining after this deal. And on a 90 grand a week deal, five year contract, Nicholas Saul is in an 85 rated, approaching his prime at 25 years old. He can still get even better as well. So he and Upa Meccano should be an absolute force for many years to come. Nicholas Saul welcome to King Power and our defense now looks absolutely fantastic. And our first sale of the window was Rashid Ghazal, the Algerian winger. He's on his way to Nice for 2.7 mil. And there is a bit here for Danny Ward from Bournemouth as well. It's a swap deal. And to be honest, I'd rather just have the cash. And as we agree terms with Bournemouth, if Ward is to go, we'll need a backup goalkeeper for Kasper Schmeichel. And I'd like someone that can sit on the bench now, but be good enough to take over from next season. Four names on the shortlist. Dean Henderson, Raj, who you remember from one of my football managers says, Luis Maximiano, one of the highest potential goalkeepers in the game, and Lafont from Fiorentina as well. Dean's the one I want. Great couple of years at Brownwell Lane. Certainly good enough to challenge David De Gea for the number one spot on Manchester United, but too expensive in the first season. Over 50 mil to bring him in. I don't think that's worth paying now. However, I am going to splash a lot of money on Luis Maximiano instead. He's a few ratings lower than Henderson, but a little bit younger. And at 40 million as well, he could definitely be the replacement for Kasper Schmeichel long term as well. Maximiano arrives on a five year, 34 and a half grand a week. And whilst only 79 rated now, I do believe his potential is around 87 and 88. Only 22 years old, 12 years younger than Kasper Schmeichel. And again, in the first season, he's a bench goalkeeper. But from season three onwards, I think he'll replace the Dane as our number. Number nine, Maximiano in, great signing. And unfortunately, we'll keep three goalkeepers for this season because Danny Ward is not going to go to Bournemouth after transfer talks broke down. However, there's a bit here for Kalechi Aihianacho. I'm really surprised that this guy never developed the way I thought he'd do in his early days at Manchester City. Six million from Lille, though. He's on his way to the French club, and I'm totally fine with that as well. Final year of his contract, 50 grand a week. Quite frankly, just doesn't justify it now, especially not that Boad was in as our backup striker. But after that sale and the season ticket money coming in as well, there's around 43 to 45 million in the budget. And I wouldn't mind a better backup striker than Bawadu that can replace Jamie Vardy for season three. Four names on the shortlist. Alexander Isaac of Real Sociedad. Dominic Calvert-Lewin of Everton off to a great start this season. Taram of Much and Gladbach. And Tammy Abraham of Chelsea as well. Well, the Swede is the one I want, but I tell you this right now, this back and forth has been going on for about five minutes, and I can't get Real Sociedad to budge from 47 million. I'm going to have one more go at this. I'm going to go to 46 million pounds, and if they say no, then I'm going to have to leave it and go after someone else. He's the one I really want, though. Come on, Sociedad. Yes, get in. They say yes, but do we have enough money for the contract? Well, here's the moment of truth. No, unfortunately not. Gonna have to remove that bonus and hope he doesn't ask for more money. 
Well, my calendar offer is no appearance bonus, reduced sign-in bonus, and 53 grand a week. And yes, gets in every single penny to bring him in, but a better backup striker than Boadu and someone that can replace Jamie Vardy for next season as well. Alexander Isaac in practically every single penny that was remaining spent on the Swede, but I think he could be the long-term successor for Vardy. But we've got basically nothing left now. So that's it in quite a short window. Only three new signings coming in, but the elite center half we wanted in Nicholas Sewell. And as for Isaac and Maximiano, both in their early 20s, possible long-term successors for Kasper Schmeichel and Jamie Vardy as well. Certainly better bench players for us this season, no doubt about that. So heading into season two, Arsenal reaching the semi-finals of the Champions League and win the Premier League title as well. That's going to be difficult. But I would say it's doable. The lack of depth, a slight concern. But other than that, I think the first 11 is absolutely fantastic and still really young as well. So simulate through to January, see how we're getting on. Are we top of the table or not? Well, let's go find out. So January is here and we've got an FA Cup third round tie against Jamie Vardy's former club Fleetwood Town, which is very interesting. But for the Premier League, well, it's not exactly going according to plan. Fourth place, just like we were last season at this stage and currently nine points off Liverpool, 17 games to go. Still time, but lots of work to be done. We have got a Carabao Cup semi-final, interestingly enough, against Manchester United. Not that it really matters, according to the board, but either way, worth showing regardless. Of course, the FA Cup third-round tie against Jamie Vardy's former club, Fleetwood Town. Again, don't forget, this season, we've been asked to reach semi-finals with this competition. But as for the Champions League, our first year back in it after five seasons... Well, we made it through the group, and oh, we got Atletico Madrid in the last 16. Of course, the team that knocked us out back in the 2016-2017 season. We topped our group with five wins in six, undefeated, and we've got the Spaniards looking for revenge in the first knockout round. As for the progression of individuals this season, Maximiano is growing by one but hasn't played yet. Nicolas Sula is growing by two ratings, 16 games in the Premier League and five clean sheets so far as well. Isaac's growing by rating, really poor goal to gain ratio from the bench, so not great for our new signings, but Harvey Barnes is the the star of the team so far 11 goals in 21 in the Premier League and 5 in 6 in the Champions League group stage as well growing to 85 overall and Didi is now on the cusp of 90 Pereira is 88 overall as well new signings not being amazing but the team is still looking really good lots of work to do in the second half of the season though if we are to win that Premier League title nine points behind Liverpool it's certainly doable but we've got to make up that ground very quickly indeed let's simulate the end of the season and see if we've done it Ooh, just drew the first leg of our Champions League quarterfinals. Second leg away at the Emirates Stadium. We've been doing really well in the league, but there's the end of our progress in the Champions League. Still totting up the wins in the Premier League, and I'm pretty sure we won about 13, 14 games out of 17. And that's enough to win the title as well. We've, we've come from beyond it. We've won it. Yeah, we won 13 of the remaining 17. Not 14, but 13. And we come from nine points behind to pip Liverpool to the crown. They slipped up in the penultimate game of the season. And after we overtook them, our win on the final day gives us the Premier League title. We've completed that objective at least. Huge achievement. As for the domestic cups, Carabao Cup, of course, doesn't matter. We were knocked out in the semis by Manchester United over two legs. And for the FA Cup as well, our streets are semi-finals this year by the board. Sadly, knocked out once again by Manchester United, this time in the quarter final stages. So, failed our FA Cup objective. Objective. And of course, the Champions League will also be considered a failure as well, as we were knocked out in the quarters as well by Arsenal. And we were, of course, asked to reach the semi finals. PSG were the eventual winners, being Liverpool in the finals. So, whilst the Champions League was technically a failure and the FA Cup was technically a failure, that is a season of success, in my opinion. First year back in the Champions League, going to the last eight, and also winning the Premier League title, overcoming a nine point deficit as well. The board can call it a failure, but I call it a success. Decent progression this season as well. Maximiano grew by two ratings, getting closer to replacing Kasper Schmeichel, as did Nicholas Saul as well. Really solid first season for the German. Isaac slightly disappointing, only grew by one with a poor goal to game ratio, 3 and 22. But Harvey Barnes was our star player this year. Jamie Vardy was our top scorer of 30 goals, but Barnes got 28 goals and 14 assists in 58 in all competitions, growing five ratings to 87 overall. His progression since the beginning of this save has been amazing. And Didi is now our first nine. 90 plus rated player and 91 overall as well. Pereira on the cusp of 89 overall as well. The team is looking fantastic. I'm really liking the progression we've made in such a short space of time. And this season as well, Premier League Champions 2, that's the icing on the cake.
And as we wrap up the season, much to consider for season three. Jamie Vardy was the second highest scorer in the league, but is 35 years old now and out of contract in the summer as well. Do we cash in on our number nine or do we keep him for one final season? Not too sure, but bring on the summer. Well, whoever is going to be our starting striker this year, they've got a lot of weight on their shoulders. The board have asked us in season three to win the treble. Is that doable? I'm not too sure. Well, to be fair, it is doable. I mean, our budget for season three is astronomical, just shy of 200 million pounds. That's crazy, really, uh, in just our third season here. And the team as well, I talked about it before, the progression of some of these players, including Harvey Barnes, now 87 rated, and DD 91, Madison 88, Tierney has grown to 87 since we signed him as well. It's certainly doable, but I think it's going to be a real, real challenge. And with so many players having their deals that come the end of the year as well, it is going to be, I think, a very difficult thing to do. But Jamie Vardy, I'm going to cash in on the 35-year-old and bring in someone younger and possibly better now as well. Same with Kasper Schmeichel. I think he's due to retire, so I'm not sure we'll be able to sell him in this season. So I transfer this like this then. Schmeichel, Vardy, both going to leave if we can sell them now to 35 years old. Ward's about to go anywhere on a free. Oza Perry's going to leave. Ben Benkovic too. Dale's on transfer list by request, but he'll be staying. And there's your confirmation that Ward goes to Hoffenheim on a free transfer. He agreed it last season. Totally fine with me. And now we've got Maximiano as a backup. We don't need him anyway. And our first three bids of the season are not for Vardy or Schmeichel, but for Benkovic and Perez. Uh, Philippe Benkovic wanted by SD Huesca and Valencia, the Spanish size there. So we accept both of those bids straight off the bat. And Perez wanted by Monaco as well. He's a good winger, but 28 years old now. I can at the end of the season. I, I think we can do better and get someone younger too. There's your confirmation. Perez and Benkovic have both gone for a combined total of around 28 million pounds. We've got over 200 million to spend, but I'm waiting for the bids for Vardy and Schmeichel. Once they've gone, then we'll reinvest. Oh, and there it is. There's the big bid for Vardy, and it comes from Barcelona for 75 million pounds. From Fleetwood to Catalonia via Leicester. It's time for him to say goodbye. What the? What? What the? What's Martinez doing here? Well, I think Roberto Martinez has taken on a new role as our senior transfer negotiator. He's asking for 85 million, and he's Barcelona's transfer negotiator as well. For goodness sake, EA. How long's this game been out again? You know, uh, 80 million is what we'll ask for then from Barcelona. I feel confident they'll say yes to that, and they do as well. 35 years old, yet still 85 rated. He's worth that, in my opinion. <laughs> Look at that. And there it is. The club legend has gone to Barcelona for 80 million pounds, and now let's bring in an absolute world class striker to replace him. Three names on the shortlist. Harry Kane of Tottenham Hotspur. He's the oldest but the best at 89 overall. Lautaro Martinez of Inter Milan and Jao Felix of Atletico Madrid. Centre forward by trade but can play striker. I'm not really sure who I want though. Ironically, whilst Kane would probably be the cheapest, he is the best striker. And as players don't decrease as much as they used to in FIFA as we agree a £140 million fee there, I, I think he might be the best option, you know. The deal negotiated with Inter Milan for Lautaro Martinez was £185 million. Pounds. And as for João Felix, if we're going to sign a Portuguese forward, we'd have to spend £190 million. That's the vast majority of our budget. Kane is, again, the cheapest of the three by quite some distance and still the best as well in his prime right now. I, I've got to say, I think I'm going to go for Kane here. It's not often in FIFA that someone chooses the older player, but I'm going to do it. Harry Kane on a four-year deal, 210 grand a week, and he is in to replace Jamie Vardy. One England prolific goal scorer replaces another as we smash the club record fee to sign Harry Kane from Spurs. But again, I think I've made the right call there because players don't decrease as quickly as they used to do in FIFA career mode, and fair play to EA for that as well. We've been crying out for that for some time now. He's four ratings higher, seven years younger, and still got plenty of years before he starts to decline as well. Kane is in. And because we opted for the cheaper of the three, we can now get a world-class goalkeeper to replace Schmeichel as well. And Jan Oblak would be perfect. His deal is up come the end of the year, so we expect a valuation deal to be pulled off. And ask them if they want Kasper Schmeichel though to try and soften the transfer fee a little bit. Well, unfortunately, they don't want Schmeichel. However, the fee they've asked for without the Dane is 98.1 mil, which is almost 4 mil under his current valuation. So I'm going to barter a little bit of Fleder here. Start off at 90 million and see what Simeone says to that. And they say, yeah, 90 million for all that. That is an absolute steal. 
And on a five-year deal, currently the best goalkeeper in the game at this point in this save, Jan Oblak is in. And what an absolute bargain for £90 million. Six years younger than Kasper Schmeichel, yet nine ratings higher and still has quite a few years before he starts to show signs of deterioration. Jan Oblak in, Harry Kane in, two brilliant signings. And of course, after selling Jamie Vardy for 80 million, there's still over 60 million in the transfer budget, even after the signs of Oblak and Harry Kane as well. And now that Perez is gone, I would like a new backup winger for the bench that could become a first choice in time. Loads of names on the shortlist. Christian Pulisic, Rafinha, David Neres, Trincao, big fan of him, Anthony Kulisevsky and Stengs as well. I'm going to ask the clubs if they want Kasper Schmeichel, but as he is due to retire come the end of the season, I don't think any club will take him, and Chelsea won't, and they want 75.1 mil as well. So Frank Lampard in a Roberto Martinez costume, you can leave, son. Schmeichel used to play for Leeds, so I wonder if they'll take him back at Ellen Road. Sadly not, yeah, I don't think you can swap players out of their deals that come the end of the year. Uh, I'm going to ask for around 60 mil for Rafinha to see if Leeds will say yes to that. And they do indeed, but I'm not sure if he's the one I want to bring in. No, he's not, because I'm going to get this guy instead, Kulisevsky of Juventus. I'm a huge fan of the Swede in real life. The fee is just under what we would have paid Leeds for Rafinha, and I'm going to bring him to the King Power instead. Five-year contract is what I'd offered, 76 grand a week, and they say yes, and the Swede is in at the King Power. I'm a massive, man of, massive fan of this guy in real life, man. He's a real, real talent, and definitely one to watch for the future, and this season as well. Kulisevsky in, great signing. And our business is done, but what fantastic business Free sales, Vardy, Benkovic and Perez leaving. Harry Kane, Jan Oblak and Kulisevsky coming in. What a fantastic summer window. £288 million on free signings. But when you look at the team now, as sad as it was to sell Jamie Vardy, oh my goodness, we have got a great shot at the treble. It's absolutely incredible. And All Black and Kane coming in to replace Schmeichel and Vardy as well. Could we have asked for better replacements for the money we spent? I don't think so. Very tough objectives given to us by the board. It's going to be a really tough season. I'm not sure we can do it. We'll give it our best shot. Let's simulate to January, see how we're getting on. Are we top of the table going on to retain our Premier League title? Let's find out. Come on, Leicester. So January is here and we are indeed top. Six points clear of Manchester United and Liverpool with 17 games to go as things stand on course to retain our Premier League title into the FA Cup fourth round after just about overcoming the Imps in the FA Cup third round. As for the Carabao Cup last year, knocked out in the semi-finals this year, knocked out very early, I believe, in the third round by Sunderland. And as for the Champions League, well, I know we made it for our group and there's our last 16 tie. We've got Lazio, the Italians' first leg at the Stadio Olimpico after we topped our group. Was it six wins from six? No, five wins from six in the group stage. So Champions League last 16, we've got Lazio in the first knockout round. As for our three new signings, no growth for All Black and Kane, but that is to be expected. But nine clean sheets and 21 for the Slovenian, and Kane's got 11 goals in 21 in the Premier League for us this year. Kulisevsky's also growing a rating in limited game time as well, and Kane is also the top scorer in the Champions League right now as well. As for the whole squad though, look at the development of some of these players. Indeed, he's now 93 overall. Harvey Barnes is 90 as well. Interestingly enough, Upa Meccano is now lower rated than Soyuncu. So we're going to put him back in our starting 11. But the team looks absolutely amazing. So in pole position in the Premier League, into the last 16 in the Champions League, and the FA Cup fourth round, the treble is on. The treble has been asked for by the board. Let's see if we can deliver it. See you next the end of the season. Come on, Leicester City. Oh, I see a Champions League quarter-final against Barcelona. First leg at the King Power. Oh, yes, 4-1. The final score in the first leg. Second leg away in Spain. Feel very confident now making it through. There's an FA Cup semi-final as well against Liverpool. We've just made it through to the semis of the Champions League. Now it's Bayern. Well, first leg was a 2-1 victory at the King Power. All to play for, though, heading back to Germany. If they score, we need to score as well. And we did indeed, so we're through to the Champions League final. There's an FA Cup final against Newcastle as well. 
Are we going to win the treble? Not 100% sure about the Premier League, but as for the FA Cup, oh yes, we win it on penalties, just about overcame the Magpies, and we've won our first domestic cup of the save, so Champions League final, stop the simulation here, Manchester City in an all-English affair, and possibly a chance to win the treble, certainly at least two trophies, and, oh hang on a second, it's annoying how you can't even skip that theme. Anyway, Champions League final after winning the FA Cup final, first domestic cup of the save, but the question is, are we going to go for the treble or not? not we will clear a Liverpool by five points in January I think it was oh we finished in second by a point by a point Liverpool have given us a taste of our own medicine last year we overcame the deficit to win it and this year they've done it to us runners up and we haven't retained it Carabao Cup this year was won by Spurs. Obviously, we were knocked out early, but in the FA Cup, which is the one the Boar care about, we did win our first domestic cup of the save, beating the Magpies on penalties. How about that? Steve Bruce's side pushing us all the way. But for the Champions League, we won't win the treble. We do have a chance at a double if we can beat Pep Guardiola's team. I can't believe we choked the league away, man. We were top. Again, I think it was five points at January. It wasn't to be. We don't retain it. However, the Champions League was what we wanted at the start of the save in five years. A chance to do it in three. And with the team we've got as well, almost everyone 90 rated or higher, I feel very confident indeed. Let's go get it done. Interestingly enough, we're at Old Trafford for this. You'll notice that Shen Jizunda is not playing. He's injured, so Kulisevsky is going to play on that right-hand side as well. And I feel very confident indeed. Man City's team is, of course, absolutely fantastic. I'll probably say at this point in the save, these are the best two teams in the world. But I would po probably say ours is slightly better. Just slightly, but it's very even indeed. So here we go, Challenge League final and a chance to win what we set out to do at the start of the save and do it two years prior. Wow, that has got to be one of the worst halves in a Champions League final ever. I mean, I don't think it was a shot on target. The cameras just panned to Edison. I'm not sure why he's barely broken a sweat. First half out of the way, and that was absolutely abysmal. Goodness gracious. Jesus, trying to slip it through to Odegaard, but indeed he is there to intercept. And as Barnes picks up a chance for a break here, Harry Kane not the quickest, but does have Madison in support. Here's Yuri Tini, Madison. I see Kulisevsky on the right. If one man comes across in Dinier, he's through. Oh, yes, get in. And there is the breakthrough, finally, with 20 minutes to go. I'm not kidding, guys. That is the first shot on target in the entire match. Abysmal game, 70 minutes on the clock, but it's the Swede that fires in front. Eyes on the price, one chance, one shot, one goal. Hits it low, hits it hard, and hits it into the back of the net. Leicester lead. Madison on a turn as Tierney out wide and I'll find the ex-Arsenal and Celtic left back cross block though comes back to Barnes it's just been such a tough game but there's a nice little one-two between Madison and Tierney back to James shot oh great save Kane surely yes yeah Tierney that'll do it Kane with the finish six minutes to go and Harry Kane has surely wrapped up the Champions League terrible game absolutely awful to be totally honest but it's 2-0 Leicester and with Man City not testing all black all game long I think we should see it out now lovely interchange play between Madison and Tierney great save with Edison McCain on hand to turn it in and that'll do it Leicester's trophy for sure well, I'm not going to lie, guys. That is one of the worst Champions League finals I've ever played in FIFA career. <laughs> like, there were two highlight-worthy moments, and they both resulted in goals. Kulisevsky's with 20 minutes to go, and then Kane's late one, turning in the rebound with six minutes on the clock. And there it is. It's all over. The Champions League final is won, and we've done what we set out to achieve at the start of the save two years prior to when we were targeting in Season 5. So Champions League won in our third season. Whilst we didn't win the treble, it is still a highly successful season. Our first domestic cup after we beat Newcastle on penalties in the FA Cup final and of course whilst we might have failed to retain the Premier League oh my word we are one point away from the treble I still call this a very successful season indeed and I have to say as well the signings of All Black and Harry Kane absolutely inspired and proof there's life in those old bones yet. Yeah, don't don't discard those older players in FIFA career modes as quickly as you used to in previous days. That's the one takeaway from this season and this save as well, I would say. As we know, progression in younger players is really quick in this year's FIFA career mode due to the changes the AMA's made to their training system and the development plans as well. You look at some of the players here. Harvey Barnes, 91 overall. And Didi, 94. Pereira, 93. Tierney, 92. Madison, 92 as well. Such brilliant progression from some of the younger players in this 
team. But also the older players did not decline anywhere close to as quickly as they would in previous FIFA career modes. And I can't tell you how happy I am about that as well. Because in previous FIFA career modes, when a player would turn 30, that was it. You had to sell them because they were going to decline so quickly. It was just going to be embarrassing. But now, you know, you see Jamie Vardy only went down by one rating in the two seasons we had in four. And was still so prolific last season as well, being 85 rated to 35. Schmeichel only decreased two ratings this year as he was due to retire and put on the bench as well. But otherwise, the older players were still really good, despite the fact they were in their 30s. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. And, you know, sometimes we do rag on EA quite a lot for their lack of changes in FIFA career. But the one thing I will say is that I'm very happy they finally listened to the community about that as well. Older players should not decline just because they hit 30 if they're still in good form. And this saves a takeaway. That's no longer the case in FIFA career mode. So that's it then. Challenge completed two seasons early. We win the Champions League in three years and not five. And despite no treble, I'm totally fine leaving the team as this. What a fantastic transition in such a short space of time. Thank you for watching, guys. Have an awesome day. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for another FIFA 21 challenge very soon.